Welcome to another free art lesson. Today's gonna to be another exciting one for us. We're gonna do snow-capped mountains. This is gonna be an easy lesson plan for you. Watch closely as I paint the sky behind the mountains, then do the mountains, and then we'll take the frisket off, and then all of a sudden we'll have some white paper, and I'll show you how to finish up this painting real easily with uh, the snow-capped mountains by removing that frisket. You're gonna have a nice white paper under there. It's gonna be exciting. The frisket I put on with a paintbrush, I used an old number eight round brush. When you use frisket, I would suggest that you not use your good watercolor brushes. Use an old brush, preferably a synthetic brush, and uh, I would use nothing smaller than a number eight or a number 10 to apply the frisket. Then you can clean your uh, brush out uh, afterwards and save it and use it again. Now, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with the sky. So I'm gonna take some of my cobalt blue, a little bit of my quinacridone rose, which is sort of a rose color, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply come back here behind the clouds, behind the sky, I mean behind the mountains, and I'm simply going to put in some color and we'll create the illusion that there's a sky back here. So this will be our sky area behind the mountain. I'm going to change color a little bit. In this case, I've used a little bit of the, uh, oh, sort of the violet color. I'm going to come back and I'm going to switch over to just a cobalt blue, maybe a little touch of cerulean blue together and we're gonna have a nice little color change going on. So what I've done is I've got this color going on behind the mountains. Now, one of the reasons why I need this color behind the mountain is because when I pull that frisket off, I'm gonna have white paper there. If I want that to be showcased, I've gotta have a contrast of dark behind light in this case, since the mountains are gonna be lighter. All right, so we'll take a little bit of our color and we'll create a little bit more of the sky up above, a little few brush strokes. The, the, the uh, lesson plan is really not about the sky, so we'll just put a suggestion there's an interesting sky back there and let it go at that. How's that? That's about as simple as I, I could paint one, I suppose. A couple little white clouds in there, uh, some dark behind the mountains. Now what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to put in some color basically on this mountain right here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a light green uh, and I'm going to come in here and just put in a nice interesting light value here. There's gonna be some green in this area of the snow-capped mountains as well. So you're going to see that in this particular scene. Over here, I'll take and change that color. So the distant mountain is getting a little bit of that light green effect. Here, I'm going to take and use a little bit of my ultramarine blue deep and maybe come in with a little bit of my hooker green deep. And then what I wanna do is I wanna come in and paint this particular side of the mountain that particular color. So you can see now there's a little difference between these two sides of the mountain. Here, I might want to get just a little darker. So I'm going to take a little more hooker green deep, a little bit more of my ultramarine blue deep, mix it together, and then this side of the mountain may get a little bit different treatment. So this mountain is in front of this one. So notice how I've treated this area of the mountain different than this area, and I've treated this mountain in the distance a little, a little different than this mountain right here. So let's go back, add just a little more blue to our green, and then we'll come in and add a little more color here, a little darker on this side, and all of a sudden I'm gonna just take water on my brush and eliminate some of that paint and water by just picking it up with my one inch flat brush. See how I did that? The reason for that is I'm going to have an area of trees in front of that, so I wanna make sure that I've got enough room. I'm gonna take and put a little bit of color back here on this mountain on one side, and then I'm going to dry this painting with my hair dryer and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna remove the frisket and have a little fun with this. So stay with me here now. Now the painting is dry. I'm going to come in and I'm going to take just a little bit more dark in a couple areas and add that to it. So watch what I do. Let me take a little more of my green. I'll hit just a little bit more green just in a couple areas. I'm gonna come over on this side of the mountain with a little bit darker color and we're going to hit just a couple areas with some dark over there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do the same idea with this side of the mountain and then we'll quickly dry it one more time and then we'll be ready to go. We'll take this frisket off. It just needs a little more dark in a couple areas and then we'll be good to go. Same thing over here. We're gonna have a little bit more color over on this side, just in a couple of areas. We don't wanna cover it all, but we just want a little bit more color, just a couple of places. Now if I don't have enough color there, then the contrast won't work with the frisket. So we gotta make sure that we have enough contrast going on. And I think I do. 
So let me take a minute, I'll dry this again, and then we're gonna come back and we'll be able to take the frisket off, put the finishing touches on it for you. That'll be real easy. The painting is now dry. I'm going to come in and I'm going to take and lift off this frisket and you're gonna see the snow-capped mountains. Watch what happens. I've got a frisket remover. This is a rubber cement pickup, a frisket remover. You can get it at any of the art stores. Just ask the folks, the friendly folks at the art stores. They'll be happy to show you where they are. See now how you've got the interesting snow-capped mountains? Let me pull the frisket off this side over here on this particular mountain, the for forward mountain, the larger mountain here in the foreground. We get all that frisket off, and all of a sudden now we've got some snow-capped mountains. Now what do we have to do? We have to add back in some shadow area, don't we? So this area over here is going to be in shadow, so we want to make sure that we've got a little bit of the a little bit of the shadow effect on this side of the mountain. It'll be in shadow. A little bit of the effect on this side of the mountain here, this will be in shadow as well. And we're going to keep this area over here light and this area light. And all of a sudden we've got these wonderful snow-capped mountains. One other little trick here is to take and just soften a couple of edges. Let me show you a little, a little trick. If you want to have a little bit softer edge in some of these areas, just take your finger with a little water from your brush and soften a couple of edges if you feel that it's a little bit too stark. See how I can do that just with the side of your finger? Very simple. You can also use a Q-tip to do this, but watch that. See how I've just softened a couple of edges so they don't jump out quite as hard as hard edges? See that? How simple that is? Just a lot of fun. You can do that more and more. You can do it over here a little bit but not everywhere. You want some soft edge and some hard edge, obviously. Now what I'm going to do is one little trick, and then you'll get to see the finished product. I'm going to take a little bit of my green, a little bit of my blue, and we'll put in a suggestion of maybe some uh, evergreen trees here. Just This is something you can do in your exercise, or if you want to make this into a little painting, you can do that as well. But just to give you an example, I won't do the whole area, just a little bit of it, just to show you how you can put in the look of some evergreen trees. Now what you may want to do is not get too carried away and have too many trees, just a few. But that sort of anchors this, this mountain and gives you something in the foreground. So just a suggestion of a couple of trees here and there. Don't get too elaborate with it. And that's all you'll need to do is just a few trees like this. I'll do about half of it and then you'll get to see exactly how it would look. Okay, I can pull the color away like so, and you can see just the tops of those trees sticking up now. Remember, this is a long way away. It's miles away, so you're not going to see a lot of detail that far away. You'll just see the tops of these particular uh, uh, evergreen trees up here on the mountain. Just a suggestion now. That's how easy it is to do snow-capped mountains. Practice this at home. Have a lot of fun. Remember, have a little variety going on. Notice how this is lighter, this is darker over here. Have a little fun with that. You have a shadow side and a light side to your mountain. Don't put your frisket on so even. You'll notice I have more frisket on this side than this side as an example. You'll notice that this mountain is smaller further away than this mountain. Add some trees to the area. Have a lot of fun with it. Don't forget to have a little darker area of sky behind the mountains so that your uh, mountains are showcased. I hope you've enjoyed this particular lesson plan. I hope you'll jo join me for more free uh, lesson plans. We look forward to seeing you in the future. My name is Tom Jones. Tell your friends about us as well. Thank you.